Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my presentation on advanced ketogenic dieting. Before I start, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John Gorman. I own Team Gorman. I'm a contest prep coach. I work with a lot of bodybuilders, powerlifters, crossfitters, a lot of serious athletes, but I also work with a lot of people that just want to get into shape. That mom of three kids who just wants to lose 30 pounds. I've been a trainer since 2007, and one of my favorite things to present on all over the country, whether it's at the Physique Summit, or at bodybuilding camps, or on videos such as this one, um, or on our Training and Nutrition Truth podcast, is ketogenic dieting. Because nothing is more confusing to people when they first try and figure out how to run a keto diet than the proper way to run keto. So I want to talk to you about keto, but also advanced ketogenic dieting. Here's a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some of the myths. We're going to define ketogenic dieting. We're going to talk about the types of keto diets. We're going to talk about keto dieting the old way, what we know now, when to use it, how to set it up because that's extremely important. And we're going to talk about ketogenic off seasons because a lot of people think of keto, they think of dieting. There's a lot of great ways that you can use it in the off season as you'll see once we get to that slide. All right, let's talk about some of the common myths with keto. Um, one of the first things I hear from clients when they hire me to do their diet is, John, is keto going to wreck my metabolism? Um, and that's absolutely false. Keto, there's nothing about keto that will harm your metabolism. What happens is keto gets a bad rap from people that have done it, and they've done the harsh keto dieting ways where the fat's real low, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, protein's real high, fat and carbs are really, really low. And it really, they do it for a long time and they lose a lot of weight, but they lose a lot of muscle. And any kind of harsh dieting really leads to a slower metabolism anyway. So what happens, they rebound, they gain a lot of fat after, so they blame it on the keto diet. So no, it doesn't harm your metabolism. That's definitely a myth. Muscle loss. If keto is done the right way, you can actually gain muscle while using a ketogenic diet, especially in the off season. Um, even dieting down, a lot of my athletes that I work with, professional bodybuilders, just physique athletes, or powerlifters and strength athletes, they can hold on to their strength while dieting down. So muscle loss is really, that's just a myth, because you can lose muscle on any type of diet. Like you can eat a lot of carbs and still lose muscle if you don't have enough protein and fats and things of that nature. So it's just one of those things where someone's dieted the wrong way and they blame it on keto. There's also a, this is, this is one of my favorites, and this is one that I used to worry about myself when I first started, that keto hurts insulin sensitivity. Basically, it means that once you go back to eating carbs, that you're just going to blow up and gain a bunch of fat. And that's definitely not true, because you can diet with eating carbs, and then if you go cheat a bunch after you're done eating, you're going to gain a lot of fat. So, um, keto actually helps reset your insulin sensitivity. It helps put your insulin sensitivity in a better place, because when you eat a lot of carbohydrates, your insulin receptors just get pounded and pounded and pounded because when you eat carbs, you release insulin. So when you actually take a break and you do a keto diet, your insulin receptors are fresher and you actually can eat carbohydrates and respond better to them um, and I believe store less fat. So there's a lot of research out there being done on insulin sensitivity, but I've noticed a, a great difference whenever I run it or my athletes run it. Um, People also say, John, I'm going to be tired and lethargic. I'm going to feel bad. Like, I don't want to do keto. I don't want to feel terrible. Um, that's actually a myth as well because when you do keto and you set it up the right way, I know myself and a lot of my clients have reported they feel much, much better once they're in ketosis. Uh, much, sta much more of a stable blood sugar um, and a stable energy level, much more clarity when you run on ketones. Um, so for cognitive function and thinking and stuff like that. So keto is definitely not tied to being lethargic. Um, that just comes with a lot of other things like lack of sleep or just hard dieting in general. Um, this is one of my favorites. I can't brain, I has the dumb. Basically what that means, oh, well, it doesn't make any sense. It means that you're dumb because you're not eating carbs. Like you have brain fog or, or um, you're on that low carb diet and you just can't, you can't think right. Whenever you have enough ketones to fuel your activity and your brain, you actually function, your cognitive function is through the roof. So that's definitely not true. Um, liver liver uh, and kidney damage because of being on a, on a keto diet, that's definitely not true. Research has, has proven that false uh, for you know the last couple of decades, so don't worry about that. Um, and then the other thing is, if you do keto, 
Will you gain fat really, really bad afterwards? And like I said, that's tied to people that have just dieted um, with some form of keto and they've rebounded after the diet and gained fat. Because like I said, you can eat a lot of carbs and diet a lot of weight off and still rebound. Because anytime you diet, your body is set up to gain fat. So it's not keto's fault, it's, it's the diet in general. So it's definitely not tied to keto. All right, so let's define ketogenic dieting and then talk about some of the facts. Simply put, uh, simply put, ketogenic dieting is when you limit carbohydrates in your diet and you run out of stored glycogen in your liver, so your liver starts to produce ketones. Ketones are fractionated fats. So what that means, they're not a full fat because a full fat, like say you eat some uh, peanut butter, or olive oil, or some butter, or whatever, um, you get nine calories per gram from fat when you eat fats. Fractionated fats, ketones, are actually what you burn as energy, and they yield seven calories per gram, which, which is pretty cool. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. Uh, but if you notice here, you start making ketones when you deplete your liver of stored carbohydrates. So basically, you have to go through a period of time of working out, eliminating um, carbohydrates, and then once you get low, your body switches over to ketones, so you get in, into ketosis. Um, one of the cool things, let's, let's talk about this. So ketone fats fuel your activity. They yield seven calories per gram. Um, the cool thing about that, which I believe is on the next slide, ketosis means that you have more energy burn when you're just sitting. So pretend I'm in ketosis right now and I'm burning ketones. I'm burning seven calories per gram while I'm just doing this, while, while I'm talking. Or if I were on a carbohydrate-based diet, I'd be burning four calories per gram of blood sugar, glucose, carbohydrates. So the cool thing is at rest, you're actually burning more calories um, and their fats. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I think ketogenic dieting is great. Um, and then here's the other thing. Without insulin levels elevated, so when you're eating a carbohydrate-based diet, fat burning is not interrupted as much. So say I were going to eat five meals a day with carbohydrates at every single meal. You eat carbs, you spike insulin, fat burning is interrupted until you clear through that stuff, and then you get back to a fat burning state. When you're in ketosis, um, you don't really have the insulin going up and down, so it's just more stable, and you're burning fats for fuel. Um, now, it's not all stored body fat, because if, if that were true, everyone would just eat it and they just get shredded that fast. It's just not true. But it keeps you in a fat burning state, so you don't have to fight the insulin monster so much. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of people out there that want to make keto dieting into being this magical thing, and it's not magical. Do not, do not mistake what I'm saying here for saying ketogenic is the best way to approach um, a diet, is being ketogenic. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just giving you the facts on how it works. So let's talk about types of keto diets. So the other standard ketogenic diet, you know a lot of people think of Atkins and um, just different plans have been around for a long time. Basically it just means that you eliminate carbs and you eat protein and fats and you don't really have carb ups. That's basically an SKD for short, a standard ketogenic diet. It's basically a lifestyle. You know, um, you see it down there at the bottom. It's just a lifestyle approach. There are a lot of people that like to live that lifestyle. Keto has been shown through research to be extremely healthy, um, especially if you're worried about cancer, you're fighting off cancer. Um, keto is definitely the real deal when it comes to that. Uh, let's talk about the CKD. That's the most common, you know, most people watching this now, you work out, you might be an athlete, you might be a physique athlete, but you work out in the gym. So I, I consider you an athlete. Even like I said earlier, if you're the mom of three kids trying to lose 30 pounds, you're an athlete. So think of yourself as an athlete. And this is one of the approaches that's more common. It's called a CKD, which is a cyclical keto diet. And that means you go an extended period of time without carbohydrates, and then you do a carb up. Now, in the old days, we would see four to five days of, of keto and then a whole weekend of carving up which is just not ideal because you eat so many carbohydrates over two to three days, you never get redepleted to get back into ketosis when it's time to carb up. So essentially what that ended up being like back in the body opus days, like back in the 90s from Dan Duchesne, that was essentially just a low carb plan, even though people thought it was keto because they weren't eating carbs. Um, most common these days is six days of low carbs, high fats, and then a one day carb up, which we'll break down a little bit more. Let's talk about targeted keto diets. That's personally one of my favorites. Um, it's definitely for the serious athlete. And what that means, targeted keto, means you target some carbohydrates around your workout or 
intra workout carbs. Like if you want to have uh, burst form ignition during your training, like 20 to 30 carbs during training. Basically, it's enough carbohydrates around your training to only knock you out of ketosis during training, but not for the whole day. So it might only be like 20 to 30 carbs pre and post, or maybe 30 to 40 carbs intra workout. Um, but what it is, it's for people that feel really, really good on a keto diet, but they feel even better with just carbs targeted around the workout. Um, it's definitely something that people have to go by feel with because some people will get knocked out of ketosis and they'll have a foggy headache each evening when they're trying to get back in. Um, so it's one of those things that you really have to test it out and feel. You just don't want to eat too many carbs. Um, so here's your example. Pre-workout, a guy might have 30 carbs. Post-workout, 30 carbs. Or instead of pre and post, you might just do intra-workout carbs. The BCA is like maybe 30 to 40 grams of dextrose like for first form ignition. Um, I'll put down here at the bottom note, for targeted keto diet um, in general, for a targeted keto diet, you need to keep your trace carbs completely low or like zero because you're going to have carbs around the workout. You don't want carbs adding up throughout the day and the rest of your diet. All right, so let's talk about the cyclical keto diet for athletes. The optimal approach now, the reason why I want to say this, optimal approach with protein is one gram per pound of body weight. So um, we can just use me as an example. I'm definitely not lean, I'm not shredded, but I'm not obese and I'm not, I'm not out of shape, I'm not fat, all right? Um, so if you're, if you're obese and your body fat's really high, this is not the approach that you want to use. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, for most people that are decently, they, you stay fit year round, not lean, but fit, you can do one gram per pound of body weight. Um, carbs are trace um, only throughout the day. So it's, it's, you're not going to have carbs around the workout. It's just going to be trace. Like all your meals are only going to be trace carbs. Like so whey protein, for example, might have two carbohydrates in it. That's a trace carb. Uh, but you don't want to add carbs to any of your meals unless it's fiber or vegetables. Um, then the fats make up the rest of your calories. So here's an example. A 175-pound athlete would have 175 protein. 40 carbohydrates, which is mostly fiber and vegetables, and 150 grams of fats to reach 2,200 calories. That's, that's if this person needs 2,200 calories. The reason why this is important is because of this. Notice the next bullet point. A lot of researchers and scientists or keto gurus, um, they want to give you this cookie cutter approach and they want to tell you, listen, here's how you set your keto diet up. You do 20% protein, 5% carbs, and you end up doing 75% fat. Well, here's the reason why this doesn't work. Hell, it depends on how much, how many calories you need. So if you're someone that's on lower calories and you go and use that percentage ratio, it will completely mess you up and your protein will be bottomed out. Let me give you an example here on the bottom. Our same 175 pound guy that's eating 2200 calories that wants to start keto, right? He's gonna start on his 2200 calories that he was eating before this. If he used this 2575 approach, here's what would happen. He would end up eating 110 grams of protein, 28 carbs, and 184 fats to reach his 2200 calories. Do you see the problem here? A 175 pound male athlete eating 110 grams of protein is not enough protein. He's the person that's going to lose muscle, um, he's going to lose strength, like this is, he's going to be in ketosis, but his protein is way low. So remember, when you're training with weights, you need enough protein. You're an athlete, so stick to that one gram per pound of body weight um, if you're somewhere in the, in the uh, oh, I would say 20% or lower for males and you know 25% lower for females. Uh, some more points continued here. The goal is, deplete, is to deplete muscle glycogen um, to allow for a large carb up every seven to 10 days. Now, most CKDs is you know, every seven days. On the seventh day, you're gonna go carb up, all right? But some people need a little bit longer, especially bigger individuals. So, every seven to 10 days. Um, and the other goal, it's very important to have fats extremely high on a keto diet. Keto should be high fat. Um, because the fats, what, fuel your workouts, they fuel your brain function, they fuel your daily activity. If your fats aren't high enough, you're gonna feel like shit all the time, and that's not what you want. So. Protein in a gram per pound, trace carbs, mostly fiber, and the rest of your calories make up the fat that you need. 
Um, a couple other things that help um, with keeping fat high, the reason why it helps, it helps with hormones, um, it helps keep your hormones up, especially things like testosterone, which is very important when you're dieting um, or just year round. It, uh, mental clarity, all right, we talked about that earlier, as long as your fats are high and you're in ketosis, you're gonna be able to have a great cognitive function and hunger control. So when you eat fats, they take a longer time to digest, uh, they're more satiating, so you'll actually, you're not going to be as hungry as when you eat carbohydrates with lower fat and you burn through them and then you're hungry really fast after when your blood sugar starts to drop after the carbs clear. So fats are more of a sustained energy level, but they actually blunt hunger some, so it's a benefit. Let's talk about the targeted keto diet for athletes. An optimal approach is 0.8 to one gram per pound of body weight. The reason why I put 0.8 on there is because carbohydrates are gonna go up a little bit in the diet, because remember, you're gonna have carbs around the workout. You wanna keep carbs traced throughout the day, except for around the workout. The goal of a TKD is to keep the muscle cells a little bit fuller by having some carbs around the workout um, and to help fuel performance in the gym. Um, it's more for performance goal of carbs, fueling more intense workouts, longer workouts. I can think of CrossFit athletes that like a keto style approach. They are usually someone that's going to benefit from a TKD um, setup, for example. Um, and really, down here at the bottom, it just depends on how each person feels. So if you feel lousy, if you feel great during the workout, but you feel lousy every night, that's because you're, you're having enough carbohydrates to kick you out of ketosis and you're having a hard time getting back in. You'll have the headaches and things of that nature. So if you feel bad on it, it's probably better just to switch over to a CKD. All right, let's talk about harsh keto dieting. Uh, something I think we've all learned the hard way. If, if, you, if you're watching this and you've done keto and you felt like straight garbage, it could have been a harsh keto approach, and let's talk about that. Um, it's very, very common by a lot of athletes and coaches. It's because a lot of people just don't know the right way to set it up. Um, a long-term keto diet to start a prep. So like people that want to uh, get on stage like a physique athlete, and they start their 30-pound fat loss with keto right out of the gate. Um, that doesn't leave them a lot of room to make changes. They just keep dropping their fat. So keto, as you'll see, I'll say later on, it's, it should be used as a tool to use later on, not in the beginning. Um, protein very high, that's a harsh way to start your keto diet with fats low. That's gonna equal muscle loss because when you don't have enough fats, I don't care how much protein you have, you start turning that protein over into carbohydrates and it puts your body in a state of breaking protein down. Protein doesn't just mean the protein that you take in food-wise, protein means your muscle. So when you're in a state of breaking protein down and aminos down, you're also breaking down muscle. Um, and then another harsh way to diet is with very little to no carb, uh, carb ups or refeeds. I put parentheses the keto diet, like that's just, a, or uh, the Beverly diet. It's a cookie cutter keto diet with like a few carbs on Wednesday and a few carbs on Sunday. It's just not ideal. Um, very, very cookie cutter. It's, it's a terrible approach. Don't do the Beverly diet. Um, don't do high protein, low fat, harsh ketogenic diets. Here's a better approach, and let's talk about this. Um, only use keto when it's a last option. Usually I use it with my, with my athletes when the carb drops that I make, like so someone has like 10 pounds to lose and I'm dropping their carbs and I'm adding cardio in and their body's just not responding the way I want it to respond. As a coach, this is where I use keto if, I, if, it's, if it's right for them. Um, and I just know that through trial and error. You know, if someone's a little bit on the skinnier side and they're an ectomorph, I'm probably not gonna use it for them because they can look stringy and flat, really, really flat. You know, someone that's like me, that's more of a mesomorph, or somebody that's heavy, uh, like my good buddy Sal Frazella, the other guy that's on the Training Nutrition Truth podcast, very endomorphic, um, they respond better to keto than ectomorph. So, uh, back to what I was saying, it's, it's one of those things to where when I'm making the carb drops and the cardio, it's just not working out very well. I'll switch them over to keto to get the last 10 pounds off, and most of the time, it works really, really, really well. Um, and that's when I like to use it, the very, to get as a tool in my toolbox, as a coach, to get the last little bit of fat off. Um, another uh, point of the better approach is to keep fats high to establish ketosis rapidly. Remember, you have to have fats high because those are what turn over to ketones and put you in that fat-burning state. Um, Go two full weeks with no refeed or carb up. That's very, very key. Um, 
a lot of people they want to just go start off with six days but you're so loaded with carbs in your liver and your muscle cells that it takes longer than a week for most people to get depleted enough to switch over to ketosis some people might get there by the sixth or seventh day but then you turn around and carb up and refeed and you kick yourself right back out of ketosis so you want to go two full weeks and then start having maybe a refeed every seven to ten days um, one other thing that's not on here i want to point out that i have all my clients do now is do all high rep training um, and some hit cardio when you first start ketosis. What happens is the higher reps deplete more glycogen, more stored glycogen, and so does hit cardio. So it's gonna help get you into ketosis um, faster. Um, after the first week, monitor your weight loss. It should be at least one pound a week that you lose after the first week. Um, the first week, people always lose weight very, very fast because you, you lose stored glycogen in the muscles also water as well so like a lot of guys can lose five to ten pounds the first week women I mean women can lose three to four to five depending on how big they are it's after that when you start getting a little bit flatter and depleted because that's part of keto is being a little bit flat and depleted then after the first week you should monitor for your weight loss goal after that so like one pound a week is perfect for most of the athletes that I work with um, so that first week don't be alarmed when you drop quite a bit um, keep your salt intake high a lot of people that don't have their salt high enough, um, they get really, really bad headaches. If you get a really bad headache, keep your salt high or go drink like, a, like put a bouillon cube in and, and make some broth, like drink that. That will help actually with the headache and that's your body saying that it needs salt. So salt should be really, really high. A lot of my athletes are at five grams or higher of salt a day. Um, and the more water you drink, the more salt you need because if your water is really, really high, it pulls out some sodium whenever the water is too high and sodium is too low. So um, keep fiber in the diet, extremely important. When you don't eat carbohydrates, you're not getting enough fiber, you will get backed up, especially if you're eating a lot of meats. Um, women, ladies, you're notorious for getting backed up fast. Um, so, and I've just noticed that anecdotally over the years with my female clients. Make sure you get you know, 20, 30 grams of protein or of uh, fiber a day for females, 30 to 40 grams of fiber a day um, for guys. So that's just one thing you have to make sure that you get in. Listen, if you don't like vegetables, use supplemental fiber. That's fine, just use sugar-free so there's no, no carbs that impact insulin in there. Give you a couple examples of where this has worked really well with my clients over the years. We have um, all the way over on the far end is Robert Johnson. He is an elite IFPA pro, a defect pro. He won the defect world championships in 2013. We took him keto to get him to his all time best. He responded very, very well to it. Uh, Mark Bacon, here closest to me. I worked with him, he won his IFBB pro card. He's also competed as an IFBB pro twice, uh, placing sixth here recently in 2016. Um, the guy's over 50 years old. We dieted him down using a carbohydrate-based approach, and I just could not get him lean enough. But when I switched him to keto, it was a matter of weeks, and he was at his all-time best. So just a couple examples there where it's worked really, really well. A couple more, it works really well with females. Um, we've got Jessica Cameron over here. She won a couple shows in 2015, and I used keto on one of those shows for the final week just to get her to look her absolute best because she just looked better than on a carb-based diet. Um, and then you have uh, Luis Serrano. He, won his D he was the leanest guy in his show and I never could get his glutes or his hamstrings all the way in until I took him keto. Once I did that, he was shredded. He won the overall of the show, a pro card. He was definitely the leanest guy in the show. And keto, we couldn't have got there without keto. Cardio was getting high. Um, carbs were getting really low, he was feeling crappy, so we switched over to keto and he responded amazingly. So it's one of those things to where it's not going to work every single time, but if I were a betting man, seeing what I've seen with hundreds of clients over the last 10 years, it works in that situation where the carb drops and the cardio is just not seeming to work. Let's talk about training and cardio. Um, training shouldn't change. The only time I change it is that very, very first week. Um, first one to two weeks when you're trying to deplete and establish ketosis by depleting glycogen. That's when I recommend the higher rep ranges. So um, other than that, if you're training hard and heavy, um, you know, in the five to six, seven, eight rep ranges once a week, and the more hypertrophy rep ranges, you don't have to change that. Like you don't have to change your training. And you shouldn't. You should train to hold on to all your strength 
that you can when dieting, whether you're on a keto diet or a carb-based diet. Um, cardio, long steady state sessions are not ideal, especially when they start getting high because it promotes high cortisol. One of the things with keto, when you eat carbohydrates, it actually uh, blunts cortisol to some extent. So um, when you do a lot of high steady state cardio and a lot of, um, a lot of fats for fuel and you're in ketosis, Cortisol can really get high through the roof. I recommend HIIT cardio. It helps boost metabolism. It's kind of like an extension of your workout. Plus you get less in with a better result anyway because it just burns more fat over time um, for less effort put, not less effort, less time put out in the gym. Like five HIIT cardio intervals is going to be better on keto than walking for 30 to 40 to 60 minutes, um, for example. So um, when you switch to keto, you may not even need cardio. So when I switch someone, I either leave the cardio the same that they were doing or when I just switch them over right out of the gate and they're not doing any cardio, I don't add cardio to it because just the switch enough is enough to get them dropping again. All right, let's talk about refeeds. There's a lot to take in here, so bear with me. Um, the more depleted you are and the leaner you are, the bigger the refeeds can be because your insulin sensitivity is better and the bigger you are, the more muscle you have, the more room you have to eat carbohydrates to restock your muscle glycogen stores. Um, there's no set formula with refeeds. I'm not going to stand up here and try and give you a number um, because if someone does, I'm telling you, that's bullshit because there is no way to tell how many carbohydrates one person can take, that we can all take in. We're all different. We respond to it differently. It depends on how long you've been keto. Um, your insulin sensitivity, there's so many different factors. Uh, so there's no set formula. I'll talk about the typical low amounts. The lowest I like to see is 200 carbs per week for a female and 300 carbs for a male. Um, and that's the lower amounts. That's the people that just don't need a lot of carbohydrates. So um, the highs that I've seen uh, can be anywhere from six, 600 to 1,000, depending on the situation. You know, I've carb females up on four, five, 600 guys up on a thousand I mean I pushed it to 1500 to 2000 on athletes before now it took them two weeks to get back into ketosis so you see what I'm saying the more carbohydrates you eat the longer it will take you to get back into ketosis so you have to factor that in um, that's why I like to see uh, refeeds on the a little bit on the lower side um, only have sucrose in the first part of the refeed really quick the reason why Fructose and things like fruit, um, they store primarily in the liver. That's going, remember, to get into ketosis, you have to deplete your liver of stored glycogen. So if you eat a lot of stuff that has a lot of fructose, like fruit, or if you eat a lot of stuff with sucrose, when you eat sucrose, which is sugar, it breaks down into glucose and fructose. It's close to 50-50. So if you eat a lot of sugar, you're getting uh, half of that's gonna break down into fructose. So you're gonna fill your, your liver up. What that means is, you have to redeplete your liver to get back into ketosis. So you want to avoid fruit and a lot of high, high sugary stuff. I mean, have some. Like, enjoy your food, but don't just go, you know, don't go ham on, you know, things like, like fructose and sucrose and high fructose corn syrup. Um, best carb choices, little to no high fructose corn syrup. Um, limit things that are, that are really, really sugary, low-fat ice cream, like you said earlier. But eat things like potatoes, bread products, tortillas, baked chips, um, flour-based products, because those will primarily store better in the muscle cells than if you're gonna have something that's fructose-based or high fructose corn syrup-based or sucrose-based. Um, remember, the whole goal is to restock as much muscle glycogen as possible without filling the liver up um, to an extremely full level. Like, you have to think about that. So those carbs that I, they're not the fun carbs, like I get it, like, you know what I mean? Like, we all wanna be a fat kid on our refeeds. Like, I'm, I'm guilty of it, but you, you need to know which way the carbohydrates are going, which way they're storing. You're going to store some carbohydrates no matter what in your liver. You just don't wanna just pound it with the things that are gonna primarily fill the liver. Uh, refeeds continue, take glucose disposal agents. What that does is that helps get you into ketosis faster. So you wanna take glucose disposal agents um, with every carb meal, what that does is that just drives the carbs into the muscles very hard and very fast. And then I actually, you know, first form makes a glucose disposal agent. It's it's a it's a GDA on steroids basically. I recommend with every carb meal, and then the, the day after when you go back to eating fat, 
have them with every meal after that. So the second day, so you have your refeed on Sunday, for example, take it with every meal. And then on Monday, you're gonna go back to fats, take a glucose disposal agent with every meal that day. And what happens is your liver is kicking out the stored glycogen that it now has. The glucose disposal agent is pushing it out of the bloodstream and to be stored as energy and things of that nature. So it's gonna help your liver get depleted faster. So what does that mean? It means you get into ketosis faster. So it's a supplemental um, advantage to use a glucose disposal agent. Just a little tip, um, you can use medium chain triglyceride oil. Those convert very fast to ketones, so do things like uh, butter, which has primarily a lot of short chain fatty acids. So MCTs and butter, um, those work really, really well around the workouts especially. Um, do a refeed on your weakest body part and also a day with your highest reps. So, Make sure when you do your refeed, your carb up, you train in the higher rep ranges because that actually helps with storing carbohydrates. If you train in the heavy rep ranges, um, a lot of extreme muscle damage like that actually gets in the way of insulin sensitivity and it's not as, it's not as uh, beneficial to train the heavy rep ranges versus the high rep ranges. So you'll store carbs better after a higher rep workout. Um, and do not stuff yourself. Like I said, we all wanna be fat kids, I get it. Um, but the more you eat, the harder it is to get back into ketosis. Let's talk about a ketogenic off season to wrap this up. Um, keto in the off season is great. You know, this is my fiance, Leslie. I know it's kind of dark over there. It's kind of hard to see. She um, did a four month keto off season a couple years ago and her squat went from 250 pounds to 300 pounds in four months. And she was keto that entire time. Now she did some refeeds. But she basically did a CKD setup like we were talking about. And she gained muscle, she gained a lot of strength, and that 300 pound squat for her was a Submasters world record at the time. So, keto is definitely something that's beneficial in the off season. I like to see my athletes do it when they've had a long off season, they've been eating a lot of carbohydrates, they need to reset their insulin sensitivity. So I recommend like a, like a four week to six or eight week uh, keto run. Get the carbs out of the way, Give your insulin receptors a break from the carbohydrates and insulin. Have high fats because we all want to eat bacon once in a while, so this is your chance. Bacon and cheese and butter and all that stuff. Go keto for a while. You'll probably lose some fat, even though that's highly debatable. I've seen it happen anecdotally with a ton of people. If you keep your calories the same, you switch over to keto, sure, you lose weight initially, but I've seen people continue to drop body fat and come in leaner after four to eight weeks. So it's something that you wanna give a shot and try out without dropping your calories. I definitely recommend it. Um, here's the other thing. We all mess up on the diet, right? So if you're keto and you mess up and you go to the cabinets at two or three o'clock in the morning, because we've done it, right? You go, you go eat the, the Pop-Tarts or whatever, right? You reach for carbohydrates early in the morning. You're depleted. Right? You're in a depleted state, you're a little bit flat, so if you do cheat on the diet, your muscle cells are going to accept carbohydrates better than if you're in the off season eating three, 400 carbs a day and you go cheat in the middle of the night. Your muscle cells are already decently full, so you're gonna spill into the fat cell easier. So, the cool thing about keto is if you do mess up and you eat carbohydrates, there's more room for them to store in the muscle cell, which is just kind of a bonus. Now. You don't want to try and stay keto year round just so you can go have all these, you know, issues with food and binge once or twice a week. That's an eating disorder. Uh, but we all mess up, so when you do, at least it's kind of a, a little buffer that you have when you do keto. Guys, thanks for tuning in. It's one of my favorite topics to talk on. Um, I hope that you learned a lot. There's so much research being done out there. Just remember, take anything that you learn from me or anyone else on any topic keto especially right now. Take it, apply it for you, question everything. I am not an authority. I'm just someone giving you the experience that I have, some of the research that I've read, some of the people I've talked to that are researchers and scientists. And this is a way that I've seen work really, really well for me, my athletes, and a lot of people that I know. But question everything. Take this, apply it for you. Um, apply it to your clients if you're a trainer or coach. See what you do and don't like and learn from it. That's the main thing. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll talk to you later.